up, up, oh yeah, and then the guy in the back. Sorry, on this um, Bram Stoker's birthday, uh, I'd like to ask you about Camp Dracula. Uh, because my, Who? my <laughs> 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 well, you've played eight times. <laughs> um, you've been critical over the years of the I have of, of the uh, what has been left out of Stoker's novel in the well, films. But what everything. I to, <laughs> what I wanted to ask you was when you performed, or when you played Dracula uh, for Hammer, what was the quality in Stoker's character that you most wished to convey? What did I want to put into the character, do you mean? Yes. Well, what, the first thing was that I wanted to play Stoker's character. <coughs> I did make a rather indifferent film in Spain called Count Dracula in which I was Stoker's Dracula, an old man, white hair, getting younger. Um, and dressed, I quote the book, entirely in black from head to foot without a single speck of color. That's Stoker. When I did the first one, I read the book, of course, <coughs> and it wasn't remotely like the book, really. But, of course, the result was amazing, because I really wasn't very well known, either by name or face. And, um, well, it became world famous. I, I tried to bring out the aspects of the character that Stoker had written. One thing to me is very important. If you're playing somebody that the audience regards as, let's say, evil or whatever, try to do something they don't expect. Something which surprises the audience. Never do something 100%. I mean, yes, you play the part 100%, but try and put something in somewhere which surprises people. It appears, which was not what I intended, that I became a sort of sexual image. <laughs> well, those days are long gone, I can assure you. <laughs> but uh, everybody commented on that, and oddly enough, it was not my intention. I simply did what was in the script. Instinct, I suppose, as much as anything else. That was in 57, I think, it was made. Then they did another one after eight years, Prince of Darkness, which I didn't say a word because I'd read the script and I refused to say any of the lines. <laughs> That's not a secret. It's in my book, which you can still get. <laughs> it's called Lord of Misrule, and uh, it's the second version of the book. And I didn't say anything. Didn't seem to make much difference, really. Then the trouble started. This is also in my book. So I'm not saying this for the first time. I got another script from my agent, third one. And I read it and I said, I'm not going to do this. He said, why not? I said, it's terrible. I mean, it, the, the dialogue is not good. The character is Stoker's character at all. I'm just standing there in a corner and occasionally doing something, you know, for someone, but not much more. I said, I don't want to do it. And my agent was absolutely horrified because Peter Cushing was also with him. And if I'd refused, that would have been the end of that. This happened with the third film and the fourth film and the fifth film. I turned them all down, said no. And I got hysterical telephone calls from Hammer, saying, what's this I hear about you saying you won't do this? It's happened three times, three films. 
I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I don't have to. I don't want to. You've got to. You've got to. You have to. You must. And I said, why? <laughs> they said, because we've already sold it to the Americans with you in the part. <laughs> which annoyed me a bit. And then, this, which I'll never forget, think of the people you put out of work if you don't do it. <laughs> well, that's a dreadful thing to say to somebody. So I, I can truthfully say the only reason I made three, four, and five, or whatever it was, was because all the crew were my friends. It was like a family. It really was. And I wasn't going to put them out of work. I couldn't. So that's a story a lot of people don't know, but I can assure you it's the truth. <laughs>